You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. The biggest thing that I'm trying to do right now is try not to beat myself up too much for the things that I wish I had in line or I wish I had put together and instead really give myself some compassion and grace right now for just the the job that I am doing right now. Hello there, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me today for a new episode of the A Bit From Within podcast. I'm Felicia, for those of you who are maybe new or just starting to tune in, and I am, what am I? I am a small business owner, I am a astrology lover, I am a yoga teacher, and a mindfulness teacher, and a huge advocate for self-care, and it is hard sometimes to say that because... I was just actually telling this to a friend the other day. We were talking about um, sleep, and I was telling her how sometimes I just have the worst time falling asleep. No, not sometimes. All the time. I am a notoriously bad sleeper. And she was like, I can't believe that. You know, you're always promoting, like, get good rest, you know, uh, just take good care of yourself, blah, blah, blah. Like, I thought you would be, like, you'd have all these good habits. And I'm like, I'm I'm just doing the best that I can, like, we, we can all hear all of the amazing things that we should be doing, um, but it's a matter of aligning ourselves with the things that we can tangibly do from moment to moment. And the biggest thing that I'm trying to do right now is try not to beat myself up too much for the things that I wish I had in line or I wish I had put together and instead really give myself some compassion and grace right now for just the the job that I am doing right now. My mantra for the past couple days has just been like, it's good enough. And that is not just like this um, floating mantra that just is inspiring me and getting me through. It's really almost as a counter argument for my head that is so frustrated with how many dishes there are in the sink. And The fact that, like, the things on my to-do list keep getting pushed around and taken over by other things that I have to pay attention to. And the somewhat, like, mistakes that have been made that, um, like, appointments that have been scheduled wrong or emails that have been forgotten or contracts that got lost. I mean, like, it hasn't been a lot of things like that, but just a couple of things that have, again, all been caught within more than enough time to fix and, and save things. But... It's just with that feeling inside of me that is like, oh shit, everything is falling apart. And in reality, I'm like, no, it's fine. We're humans. We're all doing the best that we can. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes things um, get lost or get off track. Sometimes you can't you can't control everything. I really should get a mirror for inside of my closet for when I'm recording because. It's like I say these things and I'm really trying to speak them deeply into myself as much as I am sharing a bit from within with all of you. And I will also be honest that this past week has been just so tough and I'm feeling defeated because I, um, I'm just really getting into this busy season where, um, things have to go just, (sighs) I'm going to take a deep breath right now because maybe that's what I really need to let go of is I have this feeling that like in order to get through the next six weeks, everything has to go according to plan. And so far getting into this six weeks, nothing has gone according to plan. And I'm going to share more of this story, but it's just been making me feel like I have no control over everything, over everything. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I have no control over anything and it's making me feel just really overwhelmed. And um, I was almost thinking, I was like, I almost thought I'm not even going to record today or I'm going to have to skip a week or I just, I have, I feel like let down, like I have nothing to share with any of you that could be meaningful for a takeaway for any of you. Um, but I was, of course, taking a moment on Instagram and I um, saw this this quote that said, the world needs you as you are. And um, I just kind of like took that as a little bit of a sign. 
you know, the world needs you as you are. And even though that's hard to accept, especially when you're feeling really low, maybe it is important for me to show up exactly as I am right now. And, you know, tomorrow will probably be a better day or I might have a different perspective next week and, and whatnot. But, um, right now, if the world needs me as I am, like I'm a, I'm a little bit of a mess. I'm a little bit of, um, and, uh, I don't even know the right word. I don't want to be like derogatory towards myself or self-deprecating. I just am not in the best place. So if there is anything that you can learn from that, then I am grateful to share this space with you and for you listening to um, my story this week. And of course, if if I just seem too down <laughs> in my voice for you, um, you know, maybe send me a little air heart and feel free to tune in again next week. Um, but when I sat down today to record this this episode after I read that quote, you know, the world needs you exactly as you are, I thought... All right, I'm just going to come into recording this with no big expectations. Um, I'm going to, I got this, actually, this is kind of funny. A couple weeks ago, um, Dave had been dealing with really bad pulled back. He was in pretty bad shape. And so I bought this maternity pillow <laughs> that I had seen online. It's like one of these like kind of body pillows that curves. And um, he did enjoy it for the first couple days we had it, but then it's definitely become like my favorite thing. And so I decided, I was like, I'm going to bring this into my podcast recording place today and kind of surround my meditation cushion with it. So I feel like I'm up on this throne right now, which feels kind of amazing. Um, But anyway, when I sat down, I thought, I don't even know where to begin. And so I pulled um, three cards just to kind of hold space for myself. And Um, I think that these three cards are going to be kind of what helped me share with where I'm at right now and what's been going on for me. Um, So I guess we'll do this in three parts. And this is not planned out. It's just kind of off the cuff. So we'll see um, how it goes. But the first card that I pulled is called Striving. And it says, eventually the individual's ego drive to make things happen falls away, replaced with a relaxed, trusting openness to answers as they arise. Thank you, Divine, for letting me move with the flow. Uh, This is a card from Wild Offerings Oracle by Tasha Silver, just so you know. And I... um, I almost started crying. If I, if I cried through today's episode, you'll just have to, again, you just bear with me. That's, that's how I am today. But, um, that word striving really kind of is a gut check moment because I feel like that is totally what I've been doing and maybe part of what has been in my way and, and maybe keeping me closer to the overwhelm than to the flow. And I like this idea that like moving away from striving is, you know, in that making things happen turns into this relaxed, trusted openness that you're going to get the answers as they arrive, that things are going to happen as they mean to and need to. And, um, it's something I've actually been wrestling with all weekend. So, uh, Dave actually had two um, weddings with another company this weekend um, on Friday and Saturday. Had really long days, and so I was like very excited to have the house to myself and just kind of get things in order and, and crank through some some much needed tasks that I have been uh, needing to take care of. Um, and I, it kind of started like I can't even totally put my finger on it, but it's like everything that I thought I needed to do things just kept piling up before that. Like I just needed to get some good editing done. And it was like these emails were coming through and then uh, a final consultation would lead me to think this thing that would that would have to do with another wedding and then I'd have to solve that and then text this person and then just juggling all of these things. And so I, it created this feeling of striving and the, the entire time I tried to tell myself, like, things always happen as they, they need to. 
And I really do believe that. And I'll touch on that more a little bit later too. But the, um, the thing that I've always noticed is that sometimes when I'm like in a really good place, I can get what feels like three days worth of stuff done in one day. And it feels so relaxed because it's like everything just gels. And I've was kind of telling myself this weekend, I'm like, things are not feeling that gelling way. Like it's feeling like it's taking forever. So then why don't you just stop trying to control this and feel like it has to be a certain way and instead just let things be how they need to be. And so I did that with some resistance, but it did kind of work better. Um, I think the worst part about, for me, the struggle that I have with living that way is that even though my heart kind of gets it and my, my body kind of gets it, my intuition, my, you know, mind is all kind of in this line. There's still that underlying perfectionist inside of me. That's like wanting to have the control over it, wanting to accomplish certain things, wanting to feel like if things were done in a certain way that I would have more peace of mind. And that's probably, that's just an illusion. Like I, I know that, but it's, it's this back and forth inside of me and it's hard. Um, and it feels like there's just been a lot of stuff going on. Like, um, this, this kind of is, I guess this story is kind of the big story of the week that kind of is a bridge from the striving to the next card, which is, um, divine timing. And I'm just going to read this. This is from the same deck, the wild offerings deck. This one says divine timing. The divine brings things in the timing that we need. Nothing comes before we are prepared, nor leaves too early. May I always trust your perfect and holy timing, dear Lord. Um, so the bridge between the striving and the divine timing and me trying to accept it all while I'm in the middle of it. Um, I had mentioned a couple weeks ago in my episode of talking about my Chicago trip that uh, David had kind of like a panic attack on the plane and had that heart, that heart thing. And it really, really freaked him out. And he had a, a doctor's appointment and they had said, you know, it sounds like anxiety, you know, you're probably fine. And um, he just couldn't shake that feeling that something was really, really wrong. And as a um, somewhat a person, um, you know, who's knowledgeable about panic attacks and anxiety and, um, who's lived it and who also gets a lot of anxiety from things being wrong with the body or with the health, like a little bit of hypochondria. I, I just really understood where he was at. And so, um, he had made a doctor's appointment for like a full physical blood work, everything, but it wasn't until today, actually, he's actually at that appointment right now. Um, but Last week, we had a appointment down in Castle Rock for a wedding um, pretty early in the morning, and, and traffic was okay on the way down there. You know, we live in uh, North Denver, and that Castle Rock, in case you don't know, is like about an hour drive south of Denver, um, maybe like 40 minutes, like depends on traffic. And um, so we got down there pretty well. The, the meeting went great. It was an amazing family we were, were working with and we start driving back and a lot of those symptoms that David had been having, um, on the plane and just throughout the past couple of weeks start coming up, you know, the, uh, shortness of breath, dizziness, vertigo, feeling like you can't, um, breathe too well, just start starting to get the, the heart rate moving up. Um, and then as we're driving and I'm, I'm just trying to be, honestly, we're in the car I'm trying to be kind of quiet. I pick up on his anxiety. I'm trying to keep myself not anxious, which, you know, I can only share this story. Like maybe, maybe next week or in a couple weeks, I can bring Dave on and have him share from his perspective, but I can only speak from my perspective and share a bit of what's been going on inside of me. And I have to say that it's been very difficult to have such bad anxiety problems myself and then watch my partner and who's my business partner, my, my lover, my close, my best friend, like dealing with this level of anxiety and try to keep myself calm and strong for him, but also not get triggered. And so I've been really trying to work through that myself and just be like, 
okay, he's anxious, this is anxiety, um, you need to stay calm right now. And so like, we're in this, we're in horrible traffic on the highway and I'm in the left lane cause I'm trying to get going and all these people are coming out of the highway merging, whatever. And as we get into like this area of traffic that is totally gridlocked, like we're not just like crawling at a slow pace. We are like stopped, stuck people. It's like the left lane is the most stuck. The next left is a little bit more stuck. And then it's starting to move more towards the right, which is like the opposite of how traffic should be working. Um, And he starts like really panicking and I start to lose it a little bit. And honestly, some of this is like, like a little bit of, uh, like I've probably blocked some of it out, but like from what I can remember, he was like, this is getting worse. And I was like, you need to, I kind of lost my patience and I I feel bad for this, but I was like, you need to stop. You need to calm down. You're breathing too quickly. You need to slow your breathing down. Like we, we, we can't get out of the car yet. Like we, we got to keep going. And I was like, what do you, I mean, what do you want me to do? And he's all of a sudden he's like, he, he kind of like freaked out too. And he's like, oh, th- th- something's wrong. He's like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Like I can't breathe. He's like, Oh my God, my, my fingers are going numb. Like my hand. Oh my God. I can't feel my feet. I can't feel my legs. He's like, we need to call an ambulance. We need to call an ambulance. And I'm like, I start crying. Cause I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, this is terrible. And you know, I was feeling pretty confident inside myself that they were going to say that it's anxiety. And I just felt helpless that I couldn't get him to see that. But then I was also terrified that something really was wrong with him. And, um, you know, part of me wanted to just escape out of my body and like not deal with it. The other part of me wanted to be strong for him. The other part of me was like, how the fuck do I get through traffic to figure this out? So he starts calling 911. He ends up handing the phone to me. I'm trying to cross five lanes of traffic to get off. We're right at like 6th Avenue and um, I-25 for those of you in Colorado who kind of can picture this. I'm like trying to make this roundabout loop. I'm talking to this woman on 911. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, we're in the car. Like my boyfriend is numb in his hands and his feet and his arms. He's he's breathing heavily. I'm like, I think it's anxiety, but I don't know what to do. She's like, you need to pull over. You need to get to safety. She's like, pull over to this exit. And I'm like, I'm, it's kind of confusing. I miss the exit. So we pull over in on a, a different street where I end up in these front of these houses in this residential area. Dave like gets out of the car. He's panicking. It takes about five minutes for a fire truck to get there. <clears throat> and I could tell like right as the the truck arrived, like we had been out of the car for about five, maybe four, maybe it was like three minutes. I don't know how long it was. It was very, I mean, it was quickly, but it was slowly all at the same time. And I could, he had taken his shoes off, which for those of us who are a little bit more into like, I guess, new age stuff, like I could tell he was starting to get a little bit more grounded, like his, just having his feet against the ground, I'm sure was helping. Um, but they checked everything, you know, blood pressure, pulse ox, every, you know, all of the things, I, eyes dilating, everything. And they were like, your stats look good. Like you are, you're having an anxiety attack. Like you are. And like, it was, I think it was good to hear that, but then also bad to hear that. Right. Because <sighs> when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, you almost feel like it would be easier if you were like, you have a act like this, like you have this and just, this is what you need to do to fix it. Or this is the, the treatment plan when it comes to anxiety and panic attacks. It is, I, I don't even want to call it a mental health issue because it is also a physical in the body, nervous system health issue. And, um, it's really hard. It's hard to share that with people and have, I mean, I think there is a lot more, um, validness, validness around that now, but, um, and I mean, all of the paramedics we saw and everybody was like, it's just so compassionate. And they were like, we're seeing this a lot like this. It's okay. Like you're not alone. Like, and that was of course good to hear, especially cause on the inside, I'm like, I'm freaking out right now. I'm having such bad anxiety myself and I'm trying not to flip out. Um, and I'm trying to be like supportive and 
I'm also trying to fight off a little bit of resentment because I feel like I can't handle this right now. Um, just speaking honestly a bit from within. And, um, so after they, you know, check him out and we spend some time and, and one of the paramedics actually teaches him box breathing. Um, and for all of those of you who are laughing right now, thinking like Felicia teaches all of this stuff. She's a yoga teacher. She's a breath teacher. She's a meditation teacher. And this is happening to her partner. Yeah. Like I've, I've had a couple ironic laughs about this myself. Um, but you know, I guess it's harder to hear that stuff from the person you're close to. It's easier to figure it out on your own, I suppose. Um, and there's no judgment for for Dave for that either, but I just thought that was kind of cute and funny and also helpful. And so we get oh we get home and you know I just have been there before in my life where my nervous system has gone through something like I know that Dave's is right now, and it takes an extreme amount of time to get yourself back into a place where you're not in that vicious cycle of anxiety where the anxiety becomes about the anxiety. You know, it's just takes a, a lot of resilience, a lot of practice, and just a lot of courage. And so I was really proud of him when he went to these, you know, other two weddings. I mean, just, I was proud of the part of him that had to be resilient and courageous and all this stuff. And I know that he had been just really, really struggling in his body and in his mind this whole time. And we, this led us up to yesterday where we had a wedding for us, um, the two of us. And, um, the, we woke up and it was one of those things where it's like, I could feel this underlying anxiety inside of me. And it's been so hard because I've been fighting this off lately. And I've been like, not sure if it's, if it's mine or if it's his, or if it's some combination of both, it's just been feeling all this stuff. And, um, it's like I've been trying to like tamp it down. Like all morning I was just trying to tamp it down. Like I kept trying to tell myself, I'm like, I'm feeling really good today. Kind of like trying to talk myself into it. Like my body feels good. Everything is going great. Everything is going to be fine. And then this other part inside of me is like this underlying rising feeling of like things are not okay. It's not okay right now. And at about 1230, I was, I was laying down on the couch because I was just trying to chill before um, having to get ready to go do this wedding. It was supposed to be just him and I and an assistant. Um, he comes downstairs and he's like, my heart rate just went really low and then it went really high and I am, I am freaking out. Like I, I know it. He's like, I felt it for five days or something wrong with me. There's something wrong with my heart. And he is starting to lose it. Like I can t see the tears in his eyes. He, his heart is going, I'm like, you need to calm down. Like you you have your appointment tomorrow. Like everything's going to be okay. And he's like, I, I can just tell he is not okay. His heart, his face is turning red. He is losing it. I'm like, do we need to go to the urgent care? He's like, yeah, I need to go to the urgent care. So I'm, I can't, sometimes I can't even believe I'm telling these stories. I just, I, I like, I'm, I guess I'm feeling a little vulnerable telling this story. Um, and it's really fresh. It's all new. It's just like, I called my mom to come help us meet up there because I just told him, I was like, Dave, I, I love you so much and I want you to be okay. And I need, I know you need to go get this help, but I cannot go in there with you because my anxiety cannot handle it. Like I will not be able to show up and shoot this wedding tonight. If I go in there with you, I just want, I one of us has to be plugged into the business that we're running. Like we, I cannot have anything go wrong with this. Like this is, this is my business. This is our livelihood. Like I, I don't know what to do. And like, I knew he didn't know what to do either. Like he was, he could not control this. He was, I think he was absolutely sure that he was having a heart attack or something. And so drive him up to the urgent care. He, he doesn't even, he, I, I'm surprised he even put shoes on. Like he flew into the front doors. My mom met him in there and, and, you know, he was able to be seen and they were able to do an EKG and a chest x-ray and like, praise God, like it was all clean. And again, it's like, I say this almost with this, this relief that thank God he is, is okay. But at the same time, he's not okay. Like he's not okay. 
And um, it was really tough because I knew that he could not shoot this wedding for us. Like, I was like, this is not going to go well. And I didn't know what to do. And in all seven years of running my business, I have never not shot a wedding. I have never had to find an emergency replacement. And I was terrified of having to do that. I was terrified to call the client. I was terrified I wasn't going to be able to find anyone on my team. And, um, you know, Dave does video and we don't have a strong video team the way that I have a strong photo team underneath me. And so I, it just kind of like, I think with, you know, the help of like God and some divine timing, like my gut was like, call this person on our team. Her name is Noelle. She's amazing. Call Noelle, see if she can do lead photo. You do lead video. And that's what you're going to have to do. Like, there's no other way you can do this. And, um, by the grace of God, like she was available and she was so supportive and so kind. And like, it ended up all working out. And, um, I, I guess like I'm just feeling overwhelmed that it worked out. I'm also feeling this guilt of like, should it have worked out? Like, I feel like I did something. I, this sounds so horrible, but I actually feel like I did something bad that I couldn't control this situation, even though what I should be feeling is proud of myself for being able to pull the resources together and make this, um, you know, bad situation into a great situation. And, you know, I'll honestly, like, I mean, I was very worried last night and I was so scared for Dave and like, he is okay. And he, he, he's getting the help he needs and like, we're going to figure it out. And I know that he is relieved to, to know that he's not dying of a heart attack or anything like that. And like, you know, we both just were praying for like, if there is anything wrong, like, please let these doctors find it. Let him be in good hands. Like, you know, it's, it's been a lot. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm feeling so over, I'm just feeling, I'm feeling all of the things. And, and last night ended up being a wonderful experience. Like one of the best weddings. It was so beautiful. It was so quaint. I had such an amazing time working with my team and with the people at the venue we shot at. Like, it really ended up being this very, like, beautiful, divine moment where things fell into place in a way that um, is not striving, that a place that can only come from being inside of the flow, from letting things happen the way that they're supposed to. And so here I am, like, sharing the real bit from within is how do we get our minds to recognize that things work better in the flow than when we're trying to control them and we're striving. Because even though I have this beautiful end, you know, ending to this story that like things in this dire situation ended up working out for the best, even though it seemed in the moment, it seemed impossible. Like it seemed, it seemed like an absolutely end of the world kind of situation. And yet it worked out so great. I think I'm just feeling all of this fear that's like, that can't happen again. <laughs> and isn't that funny that that's my first thought is that can't happen again. Like I have, like I, I can possibly do anything about that. I can't do anything about that. Like I can, I can make sure that we get all the information that we need. I can, you know, keep doing the best that I can to take care of my body. I can keep doing the best that I can to take care of my business. But like, this is a moment of surrender and I'm going to literally put my hands up right now as I just have to be honest with myself that I cannot control everything. And you guys know that I struggle with this. It's just this crazy amount of pressure that I put on myself to feel like I have to have all of the answers all of the time. And I can't. And I don't. So I guess that is the striving is part one. And this divine timing is part two. And I guess that's the part I've been kind of just thinking about and mulling over in my mind is like, you know, what divine timing has brought me to this moment, this crossroads where 
my person is starting to face a lot of the same stuff that I have faced and battled um, over the past two years. And it, it brings up all of these feelings inside of me, like in one way, having Dave go through this is, is making me realize that I am a lot stronger on the inside than I thought, not, not compared to him, but just the moments that I really thought I was going to lose it and wig out because my over my, like when the paramedics came, that's a huge trigger for me just being, I know that's a, a weird thing, but it's true. It's like just being in emergency situations makes me feel like I'm going to pass out and not be able to show up. And it brings up panic inside of me. Um, and I didn't like, I stood on my feet. I breathed my way through it. I got back in the car. I drove my sick boyfriend home. Like, and I was like thinking, like, I am so strong. Like, I did that. I got myself through that. And even just in, um, you know, yesterday, like, I wanted to just fall apart and, like, be like, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I, I don't know how to handle this. But, like, I did handle it. I figured out the way to, to get it through. I, I went and shot a wedding. I did video. And I think it did a pretty good job. I mean, I guess there's a lot of footage to, you know... Um, look at and everything, but I, I was strong. I did something I didn't know that I was capable of doing. And so there's this part of me that's like having this new found belief in myself of around my ability to overcome uncomfortable feelings inside of myself. Um, you know, but then there's this whole other part of me that, you know, just is a little bit frustrated. Like, why is this all happening now? Like, why can't this come at a different time? Like, what this feels like the worst timing. I don't need anything else like this going on right now. Like, this just feels not divine at all. And so I'm really trying to have these moments where I'm like, what does it mean to fully accept something as though nothing comes before we are prepared nor leaves too early? So if I, if I believe that and I recognize that as true, then what does that mean for this, for all of this, that this is all meant to be right now, that I am strong enough to get through it, that Dave is going to be strong enough to get through it, that all of the people we interact with, all the situations that we go through over the next, you know, six to eight weeks and so on. Like our lives are only going to continue that it's all part of a divine plan. And I think that's the thing about really hard things in our life. You know, like a lot of people struggle with, you know, everything happens for a reason because, you know, I think for some of us, the tragedies that we've been through or the things that we've dealt with, um, saying that, you know, everything happens for a reason feels wrong. It feels like a slap in the face. It's like sometimes things happen randomly for no reason and we just have to deal with them. It does not, it's not fair. It, there's no meaning to it. Um, and I, I really do get that. Um, because I've, I've sat with people who've been through unspeakable things in their life that you're like, you, you can't say that to them. Like it, that happened for a reason. No, but what I do believe in is divine timing and that no matter what we go through, we can choose how we move forward with it and how we let it affect us. And, um, you know, sometimes we are in the process of the choosing and sometimes it's in the process of choosing us, right? It's like, I would never have consciously chosen to deal with any of this anxiety stuff, you know, but for me now, I kind of feel like, well, maybe part of the reason that I've struggled so heavily over the past two years is so that I can be a more compassionate partner to Dave while he goes through this and he doesn't have to go through the loneliness. I mean, actually, that's not true either, because when you're dealing with this, it's very lonely, even if somebody does understand, you know, the battles we fight are our own. But at least I can be a person 
who can hold space with him and that he can trust that. And, and I don't have to be an obstacle in, in this journey for, for him that he's going through. And, and same thing as, as much as I hate what he's going through, part of me is like a little bit grateful that he understands on a new level, what I've dealt with in the past. Um, and so I guess there is a level of this divine timing that I do believe in. Um, and I'm just trying to kind of sort through that right now. And so part three, this is a different from a different deck. This, this card that I also pulled today is from the super attractor deck by Gabriella Bernstein. And, um, it says it's a, it's a very beautiful card with this just giant star on it. And it says, I accept that good things come easily. I am a super attractor. And I, I actually love this card. I love that I pulled it today with these other three cards because it does feel like a little bit of like this beacon of, of hope. I accept that good things come easily. I feel like I feel like this needs to be my, my, my mantra over the next, um, over, I didn't want to even going to define it with a time period. I just love the easiness of this. I accept that good things come easily. And I think the more that I believe that that's such a better thing for me to focus on than I need to have my shit together. I need to have it all perfect. I need to have control over things. I need to be striving. That does not work. That doesn't feel good. But what does feel good is I accept that good things come easily because even if things don't co- go my way, I I can still have good things easily come in and, and, and take the place of, of the things that I thought were going to go one way, but went another, like, just like last night, like it was a really tough situation, but the absolute best possibility in the world turned out. And I am so grateful for that. I am so deeply grateful that it turned out better than I ever could have expected. Um, and I just have to keep going with that. Like I accept that good things come easily. I accept, I accept that good people are helping me run my business. I accept that good clients have chosen to have us as, as their, um, their people. I accept that, you know, I, I, I'm trying to make this Patreon thing work and that I just love the people who are, are listening and, um, supporting the, the work that I'm doing. I, I have so much that I want to look forward to, and I don't want to be scared of those things coming. I, I just, I just want to be in a place where I'm not striving, but I'm just accepting. So, um, that's where I'm at right now. You guys, that's a bit from within. And, um, I just want to say thank you so much for letting me share a bit from within with you. Um, I'm going to wrap this up for today and, um, next week I'm going to take the week off from the podcast. That's right. I have not taken a week off in a year and a half since I started this podcast in April of 2020. But it's um, Labor Day next Monday, and Mondays are the day I'm usually recording. And, you know, with everything that I've been going through and all of this overwhelm, one of the things that I was thinking about this morning is I'm like boundaries around self-care and not having these unreasonably high expectations. And, you know, even my favorite podcasts um, take a week off every once in a while. And so I need to give myself some more realistic standards. And so I'm going to take a a week off from the podcast. I'm still going to be putting out my regularly scheduled um, meditation and yoga content on the Patreon platform. Um, But I'll be back the following week, hopefully with a brand new topic. Um, As you guys know, I am going into the busy season with my work, but... I think that one of the things I'm craving most is once the slow season starts to arrive for me and my other business. So as we move deeper into fall, um, I'm going to be able to have a little bit of a revamp. I'm hoping to get some more guests on some more great topics. I'm going to, um, make sure we get back to the astro segment. I, um, 
I do believe that good things are coming. And so I just want to say thank you all for hanging in there with me. I, um, if you want to, if this, if there's any words that you would like to share with me, please know I'd be so open to hearing them. And I could, of course, use any, you know, little, little love vibes you want to send my way right now. And, and Dave too. So, um, thanks again. And until next time. <laughs>